Hello, I'm Askar Shirlif and you're watching the news from Kazakhstan. The sole survivor of the special operation, 18-year-old Gabit Kurmankulov, was sentenced to 12 years in jail for killing a police officer and membership in terrorist group. According to Kazinform, Kurmankulov was found guilty based on nine articles of the criminal code, and the court took into account the fact that when committing a crime, he was underaged. The trial was held behind closed doors. It is reported that the defendant didn't admit his fault, with witnesses failing to provide direct evidence against him, while some of them even refused to testify at all. On June 21st, a 29-year-old policeman Timirbek Zhaksilibayev was killed, and it took the police two days to track down the suspect. After a six-hour shootout, two of them, Jalmarzabek Bauov and Yernazar Mirzagali, were killed as well. Gabit Kurmankulov was brought to the hospital with severe wounds. The prosecutor's office made a statement at that time that the criminal group ignored the law enforcement demands to surrender and opened return fire. President Nazarbayev inquired about the case of Burgat Vladislav Chela, who is suspected of killing 14 of his fellow soldiers and a huntsman at Arkan Kirgen Bora outpost. General Prosecutor Askat Daulbayev reported to the president in Akarda on the crime rate of the country. The percentage of criminal cases solved in, uh, is on the rise. However, the number of law violations has almost doubled, but this is due to the registration of minor crimes. The president listened to the report and ordered Dolbayev to provide an unbiased investigation of criminal cases, one of which is the case of Vladislav Chelakh. Moreover, it was revealed on Thursday that his trial will be open and based on jury. Concerning the border guards case, we've studied all three volumes of case materials and set a deadline for the attorney to do the same. By the end of the week, the case will be completed and passed to the court. The visit of Kazakh leader to Austria resembles two sides of the coin. On the one side are official meetings, parade and international agreements. On the other, demonstrations, tricky questions and examination of personal belongings. More details in the next report. Nursultan Nazarbayev arrived in Austria on Sunday. According to the protocol, immediately after the meeting at the airport, the national leader went straight to the hotel to meet with representatives of the Kazakh community and students. The location is symbolic. The five-star Ritz-Carlton, which opened in August of 2012, is owned by Verni Capital Company, headed by Bulato Timuratov, privately known as the Nursultan Nazarbayev's personal treasurer. The president's security and entourage occupied a good half of the hotel rooms, the cheapest of which costs more than 400 euros. The head of the state himself lodged in the presidential suit on the second floor, priced 6,500 euros per night. The mayor of Vienna cut the ribbon at the Ritz opening ceremony. The hotel used to be four separate buildings. The new owners bought them for 40 million euros and spent 60 million more for the land plot in the heart of the old part of Vienna. In addition, 20 million euros were spent for interior decoration and furniture, says a real estate agency director Michael Spies. This is the biggest business transaction of Kazakhstan-based officials and investors in Austria. The hardest part is getting permits from local authorities, which takes quite a while. Originally, the the Shangri-La hotel chain planned to buy it, but they changed their minds and the current owners came around. Can you imagine all the expenses if the hotel utilities alone cost 350,000 euros? On Monday, the president visited Hofburg Palace, where he met with Austrian President Heinz Fischer and signed a number of agreements on bilateral cooperation. Austria is our largest partner in Europe and the fourth largest trade partner overall. In turn, Kazakhstan is Austria's key partner in our region, in major part because Kazakhstan's oil makes up 37% of all oil consumption in Austria. A press conference followed the formal meeting where President Nazarbayev answered questions of the press, some of which raised touchy subjects. For instance, the leader of Austrian leftist socialist party, Sonia Gruss, asked about Zhanozen events. Leaders being sent to prison and um, he used, uh, he tried to give the usual excuses and the, that all the information is not correct and I mean, all these things. But it was very clear that he didn't uh, like the question. And uh, I mean, the direct result of this is that, uh, um, that yesterday he was in Prague and he had a press conference in Prague and he did not accept questions of uh, journalists there, so it's obvious that he wants to prevent that. The idea behind this was that it shouldn't uh, be possible in the public for him to 
not speak about it. This wasn't the only annoying surprise for President Nazarbayev. The next day at the building of the Economic Chamber, which hosted a Kazakh Austrian forum, both heads of state were greeted by a crowd holding banners. Nazarbayev is a murderer. Fischer is a hypocrite. Austrian leftists chanted and waved their banners with slogans in different languages, calling to release convicted oil workers in Zhenozien. The police called on a dozen activists, but mostly didn't interfere with the protest action. I'm very angry about the Austrian government, and especially Heinz Fischer, the Austrian president, to work together with a bloody dictator, uh, Sultan Nazarbayev. Um, I'm very angry that many Austrian capitalists want to invest uh, in Kazakhstan, make money, especially out of the oil. We think, or I think, it's dirty money. The Vienna voyage was a lesson learned for the president of Kazakhstan later in Prague, which was the first visit to Czech Republic in 20 years. Sultan Nazarbayev avoided reporters, referring to the working nature of the visit. Member of European Parliament Paul Murphy is unable to receive Kazakh visa for the third week in a row. The delegation of Labour Union members of UK, Norway and European journalists headed by Murphy must arrive on November 1st. However, the Kazakh embassy in Belgium is delaying the visa provision process, while it usually takes just five days. Kazakhstan embassy asked the MEP for a list of people he wants to meet, as well as written confirmation that said people are actually willing to communicate with him. Murphy intends to visit several cities in Kazakhstan, including Aktau, Janozen, Atarau, Karaganda, Jaskazgan and Almaty. A Socialist Party representative, Murphy, actively followed the trial of Janozen and suggested the EU to suspend all talks with Kazakhstan pending independent investigation of December 2011 events. In Aktau, the workers of foreign construction company have organized a protest action demanding the timely pay. Serbian enterprise Energoprojekt Vysokogradnya is idle for two days already. For how many days the construction workers have been skipping work? I work in shifts. Yesterday I was told that employees didn't come to work and went on strike. I heard that they're not getting paid. According to the Aktau newspaper Lada, the workers launched their protest on Wednesday, but the office staff of the company deny this. Serbian specialists say that salary delays are a common thing in most enterprises in the country. Arrears are being covered and the absence of workers is only due to the holiday. The number of notorious cases in Kazalarda region is increasing. Just recently there was a case with the arrest of one of the major entrepreneurs of the region that controlled the shipment of stolen oil based on fake documents to Almaty. Yet another one was arrested. Find out more from the next report. The active movement of oil trucks through the abandoned warehouse and heating plant was long noted by nearby residents as Bakhutbek Jarabekulis houses located only 300 meters away from the premise. I often see oil trucks enter and leave the yard, but we know that there are no offices or oil warehouses there. Whose oil is this and who is behind all of these movements should be cleared by the authorities. Oil is affecting the environment and our kids are playing here. It appears that not only residents have been monitoring the suspicious traffic. Police spent a few days monitoring it to find trucks' owners. The operation was a success. Over 3,400 tons of oil was found stolen from the Ariskul oil field belonging to Petro Kazakhstan Kumkoil Resources by the company's staff, driver, operators and security guards. Six people in total, the head of this group, had prior convictions. Three of them have been arrested, others banned to leave the region but agreed to cooperate with the investigation. The case has been transferred to court already, with the suspects now facing up to seven years in prison. According to statistics, 18 similar criminal cases have been initiated since the beginning of 2012. Nuclear Energy Agency discussed a nuclear fuel bank with NGOs and environmentalists. Meanwhile, the government plans to complete the negotiations on the important storage of uranium pills until the end of this year. More details in the next report. That's the nuclear fuel bank which the government plans to build in Ustkaminagorsk Ulbin metallurgical plant. Fuel itself will reach East Kazakhstan by railroad and special trains. The chairman of the Atomic Energy Agency spoke to the press once again to explain everything about the radioactive cargo. We are talking about the end product acquired after two stages of processing uranium ore. The ore is mined here and the processing is carried out abroad by foreign enterprises. Kazakhstan is not engaged in the later stages of uranium enrichment and processing, but the enriched uranium will be brought back to us. 
Officials say that this uranium brings additional political and even some potential economic benefits. However, non-government organizations still question the decision to host it in Kazakhstan. You're going to tell us once again that everything will be fine, but is it so? What if everything goes wrong and there will be consequences and damages? Simply saying, we don't trust you. Tell us where and when did you hold public hearings on this matter? Can you tell us the dates? Public hearings haven't been held yet because there is no project. They will be held when there will be a project available for public discussion. Residents of Uskamenogorsk do not welcome the idea the city is already choking with all the industrial development. No matter what benefit this brings to the state and the world, what that has to do with us? The city is already polluted up to its ears, so to speak. People in other regions of the country tend not to think about placement of a nuclear fuel bank in their country. But if they do, they usually have nothing good to say about it. Why do we need this nuclear fuel bank? Look what happened in China and Japan. I don't want to have it here. I haven't heard anything about it at all, but I still don't like this idea. Whoever could benefit from it? No, I haven't heard about it, but yes, of course, it is hazardous. It's unlikely officials are really concerned about the outcome of public hearings in Uskaminagorsk, as they plan to hold them already after completing talks on technical and political matters with the International Atomic Energy Agency. Young scientists were shown the road to the future success and recognition in Kazakh Skolkova Technopark Alatau. State officials encouraged the scientific potential of the country by showing colossal assets that state provides to turn ideas into business. The next report has more. For a young engineer, Sayajan Yeshankul of the IT center in Alatau is like a Silicon Island in Japan. He just recently came back from the land of the rising sun where he was on an exchange program. The scientist hopes that the government will invest in the intellectual potential of the country. Conditions need to be created for all young specialists and scientists. Everyone needs support. The government is willing to invest in the local version of the Silicon Valley Almaty IT Center in Alatau. This year alone, over $23 million were allocated from the state budget to finance the innovation grants. If one has an idea, a project that is ready to be implemented, we can wait, because the innovation lives for a short period of time. That is why we have created a flexible mechanism to finance the projects from the state budget. The chemist Nurjan Kurmankulov developed an innovation activity that might send the Minister of Agriculture looking for a job. He says that this yellow powder is a unique reaction agent that is capable of increasing the crops by as much as 60 percent. According to Nurjan, after testing, farmers have joined the queue for a chemist's invention. However, mass production is both an expensive and complicated process. The author of the invention used a $50,000 grant to purchase a reactor from Spain. Now one kilogram of powder will cost around $20,000. We used to dream about it, we produced very little volumes, one or two grams. Now we can produce kilograms of it. This is very important for us and this is also positive for the prime cost. The time for projects of the geologist Aydar Dabayev has not come yet. He has been trying to sell his home country the idea of satellite scanning of the earth for detecting mineral deposits. He offered the head of the city administration to create a map of the capital with tectonic faults in order to control the construction and housing prices. The housing market will keep moving. Why should we pay $5,000 per square meter if the building is constructed on the landslide or on hollow soil or tectonic fault? This is the main point. We live in a region that has its soil issues. Meanwhile, officials are on excursions around the park waiting for the inventors to use their grants. The list of Kazakh channels mandatory for cable operators will be revealed in November. This was voiced by the Vice Minister of Culture and Information Arman Karagbaev during the meeting of experts discussing the law on broadcasting. The law was introduced in March of this year and still alerts non-state media. Find out why from the next report. Kazakhstan's local channels that will be included in the cable deals will be determined by officials on November 6, 2012. Culture and Information Vice Minister believes there won't be more than 10 of them. The main criteria for selection as we see it is the socio-economic content. In fact, there are no other priorities, although it is an open secret that mostly state-run TV and radio stations meet said criteria. 
Outlets that do not pass this election will have to pay for their transmission, but media experts question the system of state organizations making decisions on which stations to include in the list, especially since some vague and unexplained criteria are used for the evaluation instead of, say, TV ratings or viewer polls. We don't have that many channels to hold this beauty pageant among them. I think that most TV channels can be included on the basic package. All channels must go through the registration process before March 2013, and the term may be extended to foreign companies. Representatives of the Information and Archives Committee noted that no foreign outlet has registered for the inclusion by this point. Almaty residents bought a sheep for Almaty Mayor Akhmedjan Yesimov to ease his disappointments over mishaps with the heating of the city. It is almost November and people are forced to sleep with clothes on. Mayor also noted the technical faults of agencies responsible for heating provision. It is quite cold in Kazakhstan, but the heating season is yet to begin. Perhaps people with a little influence like Murat Telebekov, the head of the Muslims Union, could bargain for it, just like at the bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> Tenants of this building in downtown are at risk of celebration of Kurbanite at harsh conditions. Now the city administration or cooperative of apartment owners fulfilled their promises to turn on the heating on schedule. That's what I'm wearing, stockings and pantyhose and two sweaters. The situation is widespread, says pensioner Antonina Chikanova, who has to sleep under a thick layer of clothes since it's cold inside. I sleep wearing downy chalet, it's warm under the blankets, but my head is freezing. That's why my throat is sore and eyes can see, we need the heating. Even when I'm fully dressed like this, I still have cold feet and hands, even now. Almost a thousand people pinched in to pay for the gift of a sacrificial lamb for the official. We want to ask our mayor to turn on the heating in our apartments. We've tried to change the situation through prosecutor's office, sent complaints to condominium owners and financial police, but nothing worked. Then we decided to go back to our age-old Kazakh traditions and give this animal as a gift to our mayor, but only under condition that he will turn the heating on. In addition, we promise to present him a sheep every month. Please, could we bring it to him, since I really love our mayor so much. Let's bring it to him. Why is it not allowed? The security blocked the central entrance and the policeman asked the visitors to try the back door, which, however, was also closed immediately. In any case, the mayor appeared to be out of town and his representative agreed to meet with the delegation outside. Unfortunately, it is not in my jurisdiction. I don't even know anything related to it. Pensioner Lili Bezruk is not surprised with the city administration's reaction. I believe that quite soon even a gift of a camel wouldn't be enough. We probably need to give them cars as presents. In the meantime, representatives of the prosecutor's office, NSC and police all gathered in the city hall to discuss the matter, although it isn't clear whether their actions will be consequences anytime soon. On top of that, some parts of Almaty will not have cold water supply on October 30 to 31st. State officials reported that Astana Barovoy Highway will, will become paved starting December of this year. Regular car drivers will be paying a fee of a little over one and a half dollars, while trucks will be tolled anywhere from 8 to 25, making it the toll highway in the country. Almata Ring will follow next, and its construction will begin in 2014. At the same time, fees will be also introduced on West Europe West China Highway. This year we plan to finish additional 700 kilometers of this highway. Since the construction of Almaty Horgos Parts and other projects on the border with Uzbekistan leading to Shemkent haven't started yet, the full completion and launch of the entire corridor is scheduled for the end of 2015. The construction of HPP3 in Astana might lead to social tension. This was voiced by human rights activist Baladbek Blyalov during public hearings on the problems of residents who live on Andiris 1A street. The, he believes that state is providing an equal exchange. By the law, raised privatized housing should be equally compensated, but officials say that dorm rooms are simply too small. Besides, the final decision will be made by the courts, and in case it rules in favor of the state, unfortunate tenants will have to leave their homes. The whole eviction situation continues for over a month now, and people have went into several protests to draw attention to the issue. 
Only after we receive official decision of the court, either on compensation or allocation of equal housing, we can start talking about the procedure of forced eviction. It is clear that every square meter should be compensated equally, but this also contradicts the law that specifies that a decent apartment or a house must be provided. The case of the death of 16-year-old Alexander Divin in village school of Pavlodar region was finalized. The court found the former teacher Alish Zhunusov guilty in causing physical abuse, which led to the death of a teenager. Alish was sentenced to seven years in jail. Moreover, he was stripped of his right to work as a teacher for three years. Report follows. According to lawyers, the plot of the case is as follows. Alish Zhunus, of a teacher from Chernaretsk Secondary School, wanted to educate his students, Sasha Divin. The teacher's educational work resulted in the death of a child. The police has initiated a criminal case, however, there wasn't a crime suspect for a long time. The teacher who talked to Sasha last was a witness in the case. Alex Zhunusov was arrested only after the expert examination was carried out in the city capital, establishing that death was caused by the physical force. Zhunusov was found guilty of a crime under the Articles 137 and 103 Part 3 of the Criminal Code of Kazakhstan. He was sentenced to seven years in prison and debarred from teaching practice for the period of three years. He will be serving his sentence in a standard regime penal colony. On Wednesday, not only the parents came to the courtroom where the verdict was passed on the teacher, but also the people who knew the ex-teacher very well. Why have you done it, Alish? You didn't do anything bad. Why did this happen? You were a teacher. Mother's emotions overwhelm the calm words of Divin family representative. She believes that the punishment is not adequate for the crime. Moreover, it is the crime committed against the child. I think he should have been given the life sentence for only bringing the child down to the basement. I also believe that Sasha was not the only victim. There was a long chain of crimes that was at last broken by this juvenile trial. Lawyers of Alish Junos have refrained from comments. It is possible that they might appeal the verdict. Karaganda imams organized a football tournament with some of them playing for the first time. The dress code corresponded to all sports standards with a match dedicated, dedicated to Eid al -Adha. Find out more from the next report. There isn't a single line about football in Quran and whatever is not forbidden is allowed. This mini tournament is a unique event for Imams of Sararka. After the prayer, they changed into their sports clothing temporarily at their own risk. For some of them, this was their first game. The sport unites people and therefore for the sake of stability we decided to hold such activities even without religious approval. Soon we will be celebrating Ayat al adha Hence we started the Islamic religious unification with introduction of football. Even if it barely resembles the football game with all the chaos and childish excitement, the football here is only for the sake of promotion of peace and friendship around the world, say the organizers. There will be no winners and no losers this time. By mutual decision, everyone will receive the prize. This was rather a trial tournament. Next year, the organizers promise to expand the tournament to at least the League of Karaganda Imams. This is all we have time for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.